What's up, Archivers? Media Bias here from the Halo Archive. This is the second video in the multiplayer map lore series. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, you can check out the first one, Abandoned. We released that about a week or two ago. Um, today we're going to talk about Wreckage, the Halo 4 map from the DLC. I believe it was the Crimson map pack. Uh, it's just myself and Nocti Vegas. Hey, what's up, guys? And, um, yeah, so today we're just going to talk about uh, wreckage, you know, upon first glance, when I first jumped into this map, I kind of thought it was essentially nothing more than just a random pile of, you know, broken down ships in the middle of uh, this rocky planet. It, it kind of reminded me of Burial Mounds a little bit from Halo 2. Um, you remember that one? That was one of my favorite maps. Yeah, that was pretty good. Had all the flames falling down in the background and desolate sounds. Oh, yeah, and you could actually get outside of the map. It was really cool. Um, anyway, but for, for Wreckage, you know, I, I didn't really think there was too much behind it at first, uh, other than I just thought they were just trying to make, you know, a cool gameplay map, which I mean it is, but upon second glance, um, you kind of, if you look out, you see these giant Forerunner tower-like constructs, and they're kind of moving around, there's these giant beams shooting out of them. Did you notice those at first, uh, Nocti? Uh, I saw them. Uh, in the gameplay when in the trailers and stuff but aside from that I was just like ooh shiny stuff <laughs> <laughs> no I know I you know I didn't even necessarily know what they were until I kind of read the official detail which um, if you haven't read it it's basically um, a line you're on a line installation uh, specifically they say 9 to 12 um, and line installations were basically a forerunner defense against the flood they would shoot down any ship that basically crossed that airspace, whether it was regular space or in slip space. Um, and this was that they were actually set on the Maginot line, which was that basically that, you know, defense threshold that they made in the middle of the galaxy to keep the flood out. It was kind of like their their front line, if you will. Um, but I mean I, I definitely it's kind of cool because I just you know you just read the the forerunner books and then um, you know, you kind of hear the line installations uh, or the Maginot line referenced, and now you're you get to play on it. You know. Yeah, definitely. It's also uh, nice to see it in uh, Bloodlines as well. Yeah, that is true. About you know, in Bloodline, there is the line installation one to four, like you said. Um, you want to kind of elaborate on that? I know you uh, you know a lot about that. Um. Well, basically, the comic. It was released, I don't even know, a few few years ago. Um, this Spartan team got shot down by what you see on the map. Uh, basically, those giant beams of energy, they can not only shoot into regular space, but also slip space. So, you know, like when they start going from one planet to another... And if they cross that certain line, they're going to get shot down and marooned on that moon. Which is obviously what's happened to all these ships that we see on the map. Okay, so that, I mean, that would mean that there's most likely a monitor on here as well. Um, in Bloodlines, uh, you know, on that installation, there's that one monitor, 686 Ibulent Prism. Prism. I don't know if that's how you say his first name or not, but... <laughs> Um, you know, it, it kind, of, kind of makes it interesting just because it's like, you know, we're definitely in, we're, st we're, we're, we're still on an installation of some sort that the Forerunners have, you know, left behind um, with one of their, their monitors, their AIs looking after. And it's cool to see that, like you said, these line installations are still going. There's still enough activity, obviously, for them to uh, keep firing. Um, 
it's just kind of cool to go ahead and, and explore some of the other technology that the forerunners, you know, created. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's, it makes me want to see more of this map because of the stuff that's going on in bloodlines. Uh, even though it obviously it's not the same place or the same characters, you know, I want to see that the monitor of this installation, you know, flying around like you do, like you see on a, uh, backwash in halo 2 you know or have the uh those gatherer things <laughs> you know yeah. swarming around yeah. picking up stuff <laughs> no i it's um definitely definitely something that you know i would like to see more of in general is just different forerunner technology than just halos <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I, I can't wait to go back to a Halo in the game, but it's like there's just there's there's other ways they can do it like they did with, with this one, and they could even go a little more in-depth um, on each on each piece of technology they choose to visit, you know? Exactly. I don't really know where we are. We're in the middle of this planet. There's, you know, there's water everywhere. Um, if you look up, there is an unknown, what looks to be, what would you say? It's, it's either a planet or a moon. It, you know, since it's so close, I'm inclined to say a moon, but maybe maybe we're on the moon. I have, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, it almost has kind of an eerie feeling, not to, not just because, obviously, oh, there's a bunch of wrecked ships here. But you look up at the sky, and there's just like this, I don't know, ominous tone, especially with the moon, the way it looks. Yeah. And... It, it, I mean, it, it's kind of got like a yellowish uh, brown tint to it, you know? Yeah. It's like something else is not is going on here. This doesn't really feel right. It you know obviously a lot of people have died here, but it feels like there's something a little bit more going on. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I mean, if you if you you know and you kind of explore through, you know, it looks like it was you know some of the uh, the ships were shot down recently. You see the sparks everywhere. Um, there's kind of lights flickering. Some of the lights are still working. Obviously, some of that's for you know just gameplay and um, detail and all that. But I mean, it, it looks almost like you know it, it had crashed recently. Really, really detailed. I I enjoy it. I don't know. It's kind of cool. And then you you go on and you can see that there's a a Covenant Lich that was also shot down. Yeah, it's pretty cool because they seem to have both the old and new here on this map. There's, you know, parts and pieces of ships that we don't really know what they are, or we might, but they're, you know, too destroyed to really figure out what it is. You can kind of see these pieces here that are on the ground, and I, you know, I can see it looks like it was, there's a hexagon pattern on there as well, and I was doing that because Upon second glance, and I don't know if you know if a lot of people, if you guys have already seen this, but there's a, you know, what was thought to be, or is thought to be still, an unknown rusted ship in the background that we can't get a full view of. Um, initially, when I saw that Nocti, I, you know, I was, I, I had no idea what it was. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, what is that unknown species? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what I was hoping. You know, I'm thinking, oh god, the. The the ship in the the Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary terminals is back, or so, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, it doesn't necessarily look like that almost at all. But I was just kind of hoping it was something along those lines, like a sure. reference to it or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I mean, as far as I know, I've never seen a Covenant ship rust. However, I mean, I don't know if we've been in a place that we would see a Covenant ship be down that long, you know, to even yeah. start to rust. Um. But so initially, I had now I had thought, um, and I'd actually had conversations with some people on the forum about this um, on the archive, that it was an unknown ship. And kind of looking into it a little more, I'm going to go ahead and say that it is actually a a Corvette. Um, if you take you know, and I'll, I'll pull up a picture here, but if you take a look at the top from the top of a Corvette, you can see it's got two little prongs on the tail end. Underneath that is kind of almost like a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like a, just an outline that it's sitting in. This ship that's in the back kind of looks like it's that 
exact same shape without you know that outline surrounding it i was just gonna say um basically this would be the first time that we've like you mentioned earlier ever see covenant ships rust if that's what it is but that also means it's been here for a very long time in comparison to how the lich looks or the fact that the human frigate is still sparking and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's like embedded behind all this rock. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's like falling apart. You can see the, like the frame of it, you know, peeling off almost. Um, but yeah, I mean, so it, I mean, if it if it is unknown, you know, we have no idea what that species is. Um, I've never seen, you know, w without that uh, that outline of the cruiser around it, um, you know, it's nothing that we've seen. You know, but if you if you, if you know, it's very possible that when it was shot down, it you know just started ripping apart, obviously. But yeah, guys, I uh, you know I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Nocti, you have anything else to say, man? Uh, just thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, no problem. Um, for any uh, archive members on our forum watching, uh, please PM me. Uh, let me know if you want to get in on some of these discussions. Um, you know, not only just the map lore discussions, um, as we plan on doing podcasts all the time. Um, once again, it's Media Bias from the Halo Archive signing off. Until next time, archivers, have a good one. See you, everyone.